recent video of my HD filming routine makeup. This is the makeup I do when, of course, I'm going to be filming a YouTube video. Most of the time I will use these products. I do tend to switch back and forth from different foundations and stuff. Obviously because they're products that are designed for the camera, they're designed for the lighting, they're designed for the way that you guys see me. And it all works in a fun little way with the photogenic pigments and things like that. What they are basically is certain light reflecting pigments which the studio lights will bounce back on my skin and the camera will receive it as a bit more blurred than it would be in real life. So it's super fun. Fun. I've used some top-notch products, probably the best on the market products out there. It's um, going to be Makeup Forever based really and I've got a few more items that I chucked in there as a cheaper alternative. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let's just get into the tutorial. Okay, so this is my clear skin. All I've done is put a little bit of lip balm on and I've just put on my moisturizer from Guerlain and I've just let that sink in. It doesn't take very long because it's an under makeup moisturizer. But before this, you also wanna make sure your skin is totally clean. Don't just like wake up from bed and do your makeup like this. I want you to like cleanse um, or use some form of um, like bioderma or micellar water just to get off any excess dirt because you really want a super clean canvas. We're gonna go ahead and prime. I think that priming is super important for HD makeup because again, we're working on the base. The base needs to be perfect before you can rely on any cosmetics to give you that air brush Photoshop look. So I'm going to be using two primers. I've got this one right here which is the Scandinavia Makeup Primer Spray. This has oil control and stuff if that concerns you but I've actually got quite dry skin at the moment so just put a nice bit of that on. So my number one go-to HD primer has to be the Smashbox Photo Finish and this is the oil free and non-greasy one and this is just the clear. You can get this in some color correcting versions, I think, but this is really, really good. It's just basically very, very heavy silicone. So I know some people don't like that. So if you don't like that, then this isn't particularly for you, but it is a very thick silicone and you wanna take just a generous pea-sized amount like that. So what you wanna do is you just wanna take a bit of that and put it on these spots, especially if you're oily, put this somewhere you get oily a lot. Um, I don't particularly get oily, but I do get a little bit shiny through the day on my T-zone and especially my nose is probably the most oiliest of all. You want to bring it also under the eye because we're going to be putting more product on there so you want the skin to be prepped for it. Like this. And then I'm going to be avoiding my chin just because that's a personal preference thing. If I get breakouts on my chin and this product has um, dimethicone in it. Because dimethicone is amazing at filling in pores. But the reason it is amazing at filling in pores is because it actually goes into the pore and covers it over. So it's like a poly filler, if you will, for, for your face. But um, it also is a little bit more difficult to get out of the skin. It takes quite a lot of cleansing and obviously... If you don't do that sort of cleansing, it can end up building up in the skin and um, causing you having breakouts. So, I'm just going to take the rest of this and I don't put it on my chin, so I'm just putting a little bit more on my cheeks and my forehead and bring it down a little bit here, but I am going to completely avoid the chin. Okay, and as you can see, my face has gone pretty matte. Um, it's really smooth, it's primed, it's ready for the foundation. So, <clears throat> the foundation of choice that I'm going to be using today is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD. This is a new product. I do have the HD. Um, I think it's just here, actually, yeah. I do have the HD foundation, but when I seen they had the Ultra HD, I had to try it, because obviously I use HD makeup a lot with doing my YouTube. And I got this one in the shade 140 or Y305. My only complaint with this product is that they don't put the same numbers as the old foundation, so I really didn't know where I stood with it. And there wasn't very many swatches online. I got these off of Pam Cosmetics or Precious About Makeup. They have the latest Makeup Forever products and they're just, it's phenomenal. They're fabulous. They go to IMATS every year in London if you um, go. But this is my old one here and this was in N135 and then I had to sort of guesstimate when I got the new one online. I had to look up swatches but it was quite difficult. I googled the alternatives to this colour and it came up with this one. But I don't know if you guys can see but it is very different. This is more pink toned and this is more yellow toned. 
This was a bit too pink tone for me and this is a bit too yellow tone for me. I am a neutral undertone, you very rarely find it in foundations. So this was a little bit, um, it's a little bit dark and a little bit yellow, but it's not, like I balance it out just fine with my concealer and everything. It's still a good match. So I think the only difference between this one and the last one is that this is a bit more finely milled. It's a, meant to be more ultra HD. So I'm just gonna take this and do a couple of pumps on my hands, we've got about that much on there, I might need a little bit more. So my tool of choice for applying this foundation, because it's super important, obviously the tool needs to match the product, because otherwise the product can't work its best if it's not applied right, is the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. I have recently just discovered this. After using a beauty blender, I really do prefer this because of the flat edge, and then having the tapered edge when I wanna do my concealer. But this just gives you flawless coverage, and it's damp now, as you can see, it's super soft. I new favorite love it so much so i'm just going to dip it in the back of my hand and just apply it to the face just one layer applied. <clears throat> I'll just go ahead and let that settle in for a bit and then I'm going to go and blend it down my neck and also do another little layer where I need it. So I just let that settle in for about a minute. The wind is so loud outside. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead with another pump of this and just go over the areas that I want a little bit more coverage so like I get a little bit of freckles that come through here and on my nose. So I'm just going to go over that just one more time just to give me that little bit of extra coverage. So that's the foundation done. As you can see, it is a little bit yellow toned for me, but I will balance it out with my concealers and powders to match my chest. I'm a bit warmer toned in the chest, but I'm not as pink toned as I look. It's just because it's opposite. I am much more neutral. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go in with the concealer. And the concealer I'm gonna be using today is the Partner in Crime to the foundation. It is the new and raved about, literally everybody's talked about this, the Ultra HD um, Invisible Cover Concealer. Wayne Goss talked about this and said it was like one of the best concealers he has ever tried. Um, and that speaks volumes because he's an amazing makeup artist. So the thing is with this, it's a little tube. I got this in Y31. It's a fantastic color for me. And you just twist off that and then you've got like a little dome and it just has a little hole in it and that's where the product comes out. I'm not crazy on this because it's not very comfortable when you apply. But then again, if you don't like that, you can just squeeze it on the back of your hand and apply it with your finger or a brush. But I will be applying it like this. I don't mind it. It's just not my favourite because obviously it is hard. But it's great for a makeup artist because it's easy just to wipe clean rather than having a sort of sponge at the end. So I'm just going to apply this under the eyes. Just squeeze out a little bit and then we drag it under. This one again is still yellow toned but I'm going to be going in with another concealer as well. That is my only complaint with this is I feel like it's quite hard to control how much product comes out and you might waste quite a lot of product um, but I suppose it just takes some getting used to or again you can just put it on the back of your hand because it's easy enough to squeeze out. I really, really like this concealer. I have used this a few times now for filming because it's only a fairly new product. It's only been out for less than a month, I think. But it is so good. Ah, uh, okay. That's enough, so. Just pop that under the eyes and then I'm gonna go in with another concealer. This one is much more affordable and this is to cover around my face and balance it out because this is pink toned. This is the NYX HD Photogenic Concealer and it's a high definition, mineral enriched, talc free, paraben free concealer. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take some of this. I'm running out actually, need to get some more. And I just place it over where I have some blemishes that I wanna cover. Um, I'm quite liberal with this because I'm gonna be blending it in because as you can see, it's more pink toned. So it works really good when I want to neutralize my foundations. I bring it up and around, 
so it doesn't look so evident that it is um, a bit yellow toned. It's a fun little technique if you ever go on to try this if you want to balance out your foundations. It's so difficult for you to find like a good foundation because it's they're just always either too yellow or too pink for me. It's so annoying. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking the um, Real Technique sponge again, but I'm going to take the pointed end and just go ahead and blend out the product. Starting with under my eyes because that'll take a little longer to set properly. And when you're doing this, you can almost see it airbrush. Like, it just looks so good. I feel like I'm photoshopping my face on the spot. <music> about it blending is super important take your time because you really want everything blended out you don't want any lines on display you want to look completely airbrushed so that's the concealer and foundation done the next step is powder however I'm gonna do the same again because I use the beauty blender or no beauty because I use the complexion sponge it's obviously moist and I'm a little bit more glowy than I would if I used a brush so I'm gonna let the water just evaporate and dry into my skin because if I set it with powder now the powder will just absorb the water and it might go a little bit cakey so we need to leave this until we're a little bit more matte um, and then we can get back and do the powdering Okay, so it's been a good couple of minutes and it feels a lot more set into my skin. You can just feel the difference. And do you see how it's a little bit more balanced out now? Um, <clears throat> also, I'm going to be wearing a high leg top today when I go out anyway, so that doesn't really matter. But it is much more balanced out. But this final step will balance it out even more because I'm a little bit darker, so we need to lighten it up now. I've neutralised it, but I need to lighten it. The powder of choice that is phenomenal, it is an airbrush in a pot is also another partner in crime, but this is not new. This is the Makeup Forever HD High Definition um, Powder Micro Finish Powder. This is so finely milled powder. This is just in translucent. I don't know if you can get it in other shades. Um, just looks like this, you've probably all seen it before. This is an airbrush in a jar. It is so, so good. What I like about it is it's actually got a sieve like in there, but the sieve isn't plastic or it isn't set. It's a piece of material with tiny 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 little holes so any product that comes through has to be super duper fine pigment and that I think is what makes this product incredible. I'm going to be doing obviously one side and the other and you see how underneath my eye looks so airbrushed and this doesn't give a white cast I found even though it's a translucent powder and most of them do. It does give a tiny tiny bit but hardly noticeable. So brilliant. So I'm just going to quickly touch under my eye because I get a little crease from when I weighed it out, but don't use the beauty blender because we don't want to put any more moisture back in and get it cakey under the eye. So, always for setting under my eye, <clears throat> no matter what, I use the Sigma um, Tapered Kabuki F86. This is an amazing, amazing brush for setting under the eye, and I'm just going to take a bit of product on it like that. Ooh, don't, you don't want to take too much because otherwise it does get cakey. Ooh, it goes everywhere. And then we're just going to go like this. And can you see how much more, I, I'm a far away from the viewfinder and even I can see it that looks so much more airbrushed than the other side. It's a miracle, it's so fine and it just works amazing. And make sure you press that in, don't drag, definitely don't want to drag, everything needs to be patted. So that's that side and that's that side so much more HD. So that's my under the eyes and now I'm just going to change over to the um, flat top elf brush, elf powder brush. Super good because we're going to be pressing on the product, that's what you want. You don't again want to have a big fluffy brush and just go like that because you want precision and this is precision. So we'll just and a little bit of this goes a long way. A very long way, believe me. Probably only need about one tiny puff for one side, one tiny puff for another, and then a little one for the forehead. Like literally that's all I have on the brush. And that covers it all. <laughs> So I'm going to go 
ahead and just finish up my makeup and get back to you guys. Okay, so I've just finished my face and I had to hurry because I've actually meant to meet a friend like in five minutes in town. Um, but this is how it came out. All the other products I use will be listed down below, but it's just using my basics. I did use on my eyes the MAC Cinderella palette and on my lips the Girl on number 15 Rougie lipstick. Um, but overall the products that obviously I recommended was the... Smashbox Photo Finish Primer, the Makeup Forever Ultra HD, the Ultra HD Concealer, the NYX HD Concealer, and the Makeup Forever HD Translucent Setting Powder. These are all fantastic products. You can get the Makeup Forever ones um, at Precious About Makeup or Pam. The link will be down below to individually linked um, of these items. They are such great items. They have all the Makeup Forever on there as well. Um, which is good because we can't actually get it in store in the UK. These are fantastic products. I love the foundation, I love the concealer, I love the powder. There's nothing I um, can say bad about these at the moment. It sets really well. I am also just going to spray a little bit of the Scandinavia setting spray because I did put the... Mm, I did put the primer spray. And I need my makeup to last today because it is wet and windy outside. But yeah, so this is my HD filming like routine usually as I do with the Makeup Forever products and the NYX and everything. HD products are just simply products that are much more finely milled. The pigment is a little bit more finely milled. The formula is a bit more glidable. It's good makeup. It's a reason it's called HD. It's because the camera picks up your skin differently than you would in real life. I would still wear this out even if I didn't film because it looks beautiful. But I think people get confused with the fact that HD makeup looks HD in real life. It doesn't. It looks like makeup in real life. On camera, it picks up so much better because of the photogenic pigments. There are certain pigments that just light reflect and with the light bouncing back on my skin, it makes me look a little bit more blurred. It doesn't work like that in real life, but it does with the camera. But have a little look and read up if you're really interested in HD makeup. It was a massive section when I was learning, um, when I got my diploma in makeup. So, this is what I used for my HD tutorial. I hope you guys did enjoy this video, and I will see you all in my next one. Remember to stay beautiful. Ciao!